Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Relab Life. This time I'm going to talk to you about something slightly different than usual. I'm going to show you a technique that we use quite a lot here at Relab, um, mainly for internal purposes, but I do facilitate things like this as well for clients. And it's this thing that I've picked up from our friends at AJ and Smart, and I'll show you links to their page in, in YouTube. We've learned so much about um, these type of methods from AJ and Smart, particularly around the Google Design Sprint um, methodology. Um, that's been very, very helpful for us. So AJ and Smart, guys, if you're listening to this, we we'll love you here down under in Australia. We'd love to say hello next time. Uh, but what I'd like to share to you guys, these audi uh, our audience as well, is um, the Lightning Decision Jam method uh, that AJ and Smart have introduced. Uh, and we've picked up along the way and it has been very, very helpful. And the whole rationale around it is just because businesses and organizations, including ourselves, spend way too much time to discuss uh, basically um, everything, whether it's a business problem, internal, external, client problems, or whatever it is, and uh, finding a solution or solving a problem around it could be quite lengthy in terms of the time that it takes. So this whole lightning decision jam just makes the whole discussion a lot more uh, structured, uh, it's time bound as well, which is really, really good. And it makes us appreciate time um, even more. And um, the outcome that comes out, out of it has been very, very good too, because it's quite uh, measurable. So I'm gonna show you an example on how we usually do it. Hopefully you enjoy it. So guys, before we start, there are ways of making this process efficient. Uh, one of it is just to prepare with all of the materials that you need, but we really like to start with an agenda that you pass on to each team member so they kind of get an idea of what they're going to go through throughout the session. Now these sessions should just take um, you know, about two, three hours max um, if it goes really, really well. And usually that's the case for us. Um, you need some post-it notes, the square ones, two different colors um, and I'll explain why later on. Um, another post-it note, note which is more of the rectangular version of it. Um, again, another color would be good. Some voting dots. Um, doesn't matter what color, but always look for something that's a bit more uh, that, that stands out when you place it on post-it note later on. Um, you will need some um, whiteboard markers as well as the whiteboard as well if possible if not you'll be able to use something else like um, you know a monstrous big sized post-it or some magic paper perhaps uh, just something to write on a wall um, some nice to haves are scissors masking tape is always good to have now let's start so guys, we find that this technique really, really works for a, collabor a collaborative team environment. Um, when you wanna solve something together, but without having too much uh, unstructured discussion, as we said, um, this technique works really well because um, it's quite um, methodical and it's quite structured uh, with eventually the same results as well, if not even better. Okay, so um, ideally in terms of number of team members in this type of discussion, you could really do whatever. Uh, but here in our office, we usually do it between say, uh, specific teams, whether it's the leadership team or it's the just the development team or just the design team, for example, or we could do it all together as well. Um, in the past though, I find that it really works when you're up to say seven or eight. When it's more than that, um, then it, the group might be too big that you may need to break it into two groups, three groups and so on, okay? Um, so um, ideally six, seven is ideal. Uh, you could still do it between four or five of you, but if it's more than eight, I'd say it's a little bit too big that you may wanna consider to break it down to two groups, okay? Um, so before we dive in deeper, usually I'd like to start the session just by acknowledging the things that are already working well. Now in this particular instance, one of the, th one of the um, workshop that we did recently internally here at Relab is a leadership workshop where we would like to identify 
um, what are the issues, challenges, problems that we're facing as a leadership team. Okay, so before getting into the problems mode, we like to go into the things that are already working really well um, and acknowledging that and have everyone participate in it. So the way we would like to start in doing it is picture um, a situation where you've got the sea and then you've got a boat like this and there's a sail and there's an anchor, right? There's an anchor in there. So the anchor kind of anchors you down in the ground, but the sail with the wind, it pushes you forward. So we'd like to start with the things that are working well um, and have everyone, each of the team members to write down in one post-it note per point, um, the things that are already working well. So looking at the Relab, you know, some of the things that are already working well for me is um, that we understand um, each other's role. Okay, so that's one example. Now, give everyone probably about four to five minutes to silently write down their own points, have them sit around the table, and then without discussion, just write down as many points as possible within that time frame. Um, just, you can just time it using, I use my iPad for it, but if you've got a timer, you could use that as well. Um, so just write as many points, right? So the other point that I can think about is that we um, have the same vision in the next two years. Okay, so you could come up with anything. I doubt you can re read this, but once the four to five minutes is up, everyone's gonna have a whole bunch of post-it notes. Some people might have five, some people might have 15, doesn't really matter, right? So once the time is up, have each team member um, go up the front and post it either on the wall Actually, you didn't draw that on the wall, did you? You drew that on the whiteboard. So have them come up to the whiteboard and just quickly read it out loud, the points that are already working well individually. So for example, I would go up, okay guys, so I think um, we have the same vision in the next two years. So that's working really well. Uh, we understand each other's role. So that's also positive. And eventually you'll end up with everyone having their post-it notes on the upper side of the drawing, which is the sail side of the boat, because these are the things that pushes us forward together as a team. So these are the positives, right? Um, so you've done that. Um, and everyone kind of has, has already heard what everyone has to say about the things that are already working well. It creates this good vibe before we dive into the problems, uh, which is the heavier stuff. And that's the, the thing that we wanted to, that's the thing that we wanted to solve, right? So once we've done that, we're gonna go through the same exercise where everyone sits down around the table and then they've got the different color of the post-it this time. And we would like to now list down the problems, the issues that we've got, or each individual think um, we have as a team, all right? So in our context, it was a leadership team meeting and then everyone has their own, um, has their own views around problems and some of them might be a duplicate. All right, so again, give them about four to five minutes to write down as many as possible. Um, you don't have to overthink it. Uh, it's not, no one's gonna judge you on it, right? So it's more about the quantity and I guess having as many points as you can. This time, we're gonna have each of the team member come up and again, read it out loud and list it down here. You don't have to which is the, the lower side of the drawing, by the way, which is the anchor. The anchor holds the boat. It doesn't, it, it prevents the boat from moving. That was the whole analogy. Um, and basically read it out loud. You don't have to present it. You just have to make sure that everyone in the room understands it. Um, and if, as long as they get the point, that's all that matters, okay? So the next one that I've got is we lack experience in team leadership. And I'll just list it there. And eventually you'll end up with blue notes, blue no, uh, post-it notes um, along the side, the, the bottom side of the boat. Once you've done this part, we'd like everyone to focus on the 
problem post-its, which is the blue one that we have here. Um, now you won't have just two, but you'll have a whole bunch of them. Now, um, I guess another role that is important in this exercise is the facilitator. And let's say I'm the facilitator within my team of six or seven, then I would, together with the team, I would try to um, categorize these notes because some of them might be a duplicate. Uh, one of my points here might be exactly the same as my other colleague. So we just overlay them on, on top of each other. So when we're doing that, um, you can do it together as a team, but led by the facilitator. Uh, but once that's clear and everyone has a good read on the notes, uh, on the problem notes, then everyone gets some voting dots. Um, you could give everyone kind of like three dots perhaps um, and vote, have each of the team member to vote on the most important issue or challenge to be solved, okay? So eventually you'll get um, some dots around the post-its. Some post-it might have more votes than the other. Um, like that, for example, and there will be post-its that has no votes at all, okay? So what we're getting out of this later on is kind of like a heat map of um, area of focus, and then you're going to categorize it and understand which are the ones that we want to focus more. Usually in an exercise, we would find that um, you'll have a couple of post-its that only has one dot, uh, but you'll have numbers of post-its that has four, five, or even more. Oftentimes we find that the area of focus, when, when the question is about what's the most important challenge or issue, then most people will kind of have the same idea more or less. If you, if you come from the same team um, that are having the same type of pain points. So it's actually not too difficult later on to understand on what is the most important one. Okay, so once you've done that, um, we would pick up the notes that are voted. We would ignore the ones that may only have one, but in this instance, let's pretend that's not one, that's three. This one has five instead of two. So we'll categorize them like that. And we're going to rephrase them using a Google Design Sprint method called the How Might We notes. Um, and it's essentially just rephrasing a problem to become solvable. Um, and the way to do it is we would use this rectangular post-its um, and convert the statement that was in the problem note. For example, we don't have a system to review past work. Then I would convert that into a how might we question. So basically converting it into a question using how might we method. So how might we have a system to review our password. Have a system to review our past work. Okay, so that becomes a question like that. So you do that, you, you do the how might we note on all of the votes, all of the voted uh, problems that you've selected. So depending on the number of team members and depending, of, uh, depending on how big of an issue your organization or your team have, um, that will kind of determine how many how might we's are gonna be up there. Uh, but tra traditionally you'd end up with, I don't know, probably about six, seven how might we's. There could be four or five as well, but it won't be as many as the cards that you've had before, which was the problem ones, right? Um, so what we're gonna do now is let's say we've got Let's pretend that's more than three, six or seven. Um, everyone gets probably about two voting dots um, or you could go up to three if that's a little bit more than that. Uh, but the whole point is again to vote on, on the most important uh, how might we question that we, that we think is the important one. So have everyone again go around the room and just read through the how might we's and have a good consideration give them about two minutes to do that um, or, or about three minutes even and then have them vote on the most important one so well, at the end of the day you'll end up with maybe from six how might we's you end up with about three or two how might we's that you want to focus on once you've done that again you do a voting tree 
um, where you categorize them and then you've decided, okay, that's got, let's say, more than one, let's say that's two votes and that's another one that's two votes, but we've got another one that's one. And then what you wanna do for the purposes of the exercise is focus on one, if it was on the same type of topic, focus on one how might we question and pick the one uh, that we're gonna focus on for the next step. Now, if you have two how might we's that are the exact same number of votes, so let's say you've got two of them and they're both three dots, um, pick the one that is on the far left to start with. And then I know what you're gonna ask, you're gonna go, oh, what's gonna happen with the other one? Are we neglecting that issue or problem, which means we won't be able to solve it. You'll be able to solve it once you've done this. And if you've got more time, you can take the other one and do the same exercise. But most of the time, what I find is once you focus on one big issue, that kind of solves everything else, uh, that it doesn't really matter, okay? All right, as a matter of fact, people struggle just to do one. So now that you've got one how might we card to focus on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up with our solutions mode on. Basically, we need to answer this question, which is in this case, how might we have a system to review our past work? Um, so have the team sit around the table, similar to how you came up with the problems, uh, use one of the post-it, one of the square post-its, and then write as many solutions um, as you can within the time frame. Again, spend about five, six minutes. Um, six minutes is maybe plenty, so a maximum of six, I'd say, um, to write down as many solutions as possible. And we're gonna go through the same exercise as the previous ones. Now have everyone pin up their, their solution cards onto the whiteboard or, or onto the wall. Um, this time, you don't have to present or read out your uh, solutions. You'll just paste it up like that and have everyone come up. So at the moment, I've just got three as an example, but you may end up with 10, 15, 20 um, or more. Have that in the wall or in the post, sorry, in the whiteboard and have everyone kind of go, go through it individually, silently, just read through it and um, categorize them as you go through as well, led by the facilitator. So we may acknowledge that some of them are actually the same thing. We're just gonna overlay on top of it, okay, as an example. So once you've done that, what we're gonna do is similar to the problems, we're gonna vote on the most important or the most um, actionable solutions that we think there is relevant to the how might we question. So we're all about answering this question right now. Again, use the voting dots and you might end up with something like that. That may have two dots on it. This may have one. This may have three of them, let's say. And some cards won't have votes which is fine, it's not a competition, you guys. Um, so once you've got this set up, you wanna categorize them and again, make a voting tree, three, two, one. So that one's got the most vote, at least everyone's got the same understanding on which solution has the most votes, okay? So guys, now that you've got your um, how might we question to focus on, and you've got some of the voted solutions that you've got as well, what we wanna do is prioritize these solutions so we know how to action them. Remember the whole point of this exercise is for us to be able to discuss collaboratively as a team and to prioritize actions that we can measure as soon as possible. So it's all about creating actions, not just talk or plan, okay? So the best way to do that is we would use this scale called the effort impact scale and it's used a lot by um, consulting agencies. Um, so you write down effort down here and impact on the other side. So you're looking for high impact, uh, low effort first, that's your priority to action, then you'd be looking for high effort. So essentially what we're looking for are high impact stuff, which are these ones up here, this area up here, and um, start with the low effort because that's the low hanging fruit. That's the easiest to action we assume. And um, the high effort ones could be your backlog 
where you could um, list that for action or for your further KPIs um, in the next three months, six months, or a year. Okay, so as an example, how we would do it is you start with the one with the solution that's got the most votes. For example, that one's got three votes. So we find that that solution is quite important. What we need to do next as a team is decide on how much of an effort it is to do this, okay? So the way I would do this is you start in the middle and then talk to your team and say, okay, look guys, um, impact wise, like how big of an impact it, will it be? Is it higher or lower? Or have them start somewhere. So usually there might be discussions where you go higher, and you go, oh no, go one inch lower and stuff like that. Don't worry too much about that. Just start somewhere, right? If, so if we see that as high impact, then start somewhere up here. Um, and then ask the team what type of an effort is that. So it may be, you know what, it's kind of like in the middle or slightly right to the middle. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Okay, we drop it there. Move on to the next one. So we go that. Okay, what do you think guys? High impact, low impact? You go, that's high definitely, uh, but it's slightly lower to the, than that first one. So we go, okay, maybe it's somewhere there, but it's lower effort to action. So it goes there. The next one, as an example, you do the same thing basically. So you may end up looking with, end up with something like this. Okay. Um, so essentially, we've got this card here that is sitting clearly in the high impact, low effort area, but you've got this other card that is sitting somewhere in between in terms of an effort, but we still see that as a high impact. If there are cards that end up being down here, just ignore them. Um, and you've got this other one here, which is higher impact. You know, throughout the conversation, that might move up a little bit even. Depends. But you may end up with something like this, right? So I'm gonna show you what our one ends up looking like, and I'll explain to you what type of things has happened since then. Okay. For our one, um, the question that we end up focusing on was, how might we reflect on our failure and mistakes to make progress? So the things that we've decided to, or the solutions that came out out of the discussion were some of these, you know, the first one that was quite clear was document types of categories and failure, write it down. So it's kind of like the same thing uh, that doesn't necessarily, that didn't necessarily have the most votes because the most votes went up, went down here as a matter of fact, interestingly, but I won't go too much into that. I'll focus on that and that. So. The first one that we see as a lower effort, but high impact, uh, so it sits within that matrix there, is documenting or writing it down. So writing down the failures that we've got, how do we do with it? I'll move to the next um, uh, point after. But the other one here that we identify as high effort, high impact, is make rules, policy, and follow it. So it's essentially to us, it sounded like a whole exercise of policy writing which is higher effort because it, it requires more time and effort okay and maybe resources too so based on what we've got here that's the one that we end up focusing on it's documenting and writing down our failures basically for us to be able to see it okay so the next thing to do once you've identified that is to make three steps of actionable plans. So once we've identified what's our what's the solution that we want to focus on, that is low, that is the low hanging fruit. It's a low effort. It's a high impact. Um, we want to come up with the three steps, actions, right? So um, think about something that could be done within just two weeks time. So it needs to be easy to do, but it has a high impact. Usually you'll come up with something. In our case, the step number one that we have to do is to set up physical and visible issue log. So it needs to be physical, it needs to be um, visible as well, that everyone could see it. As a matter of fact, we've just put a note there saying today, because we've decided to do it pretty much as soon as possible because it's so easy to do. Step number two was start listing the issues. So we've decided to just list down in a post-it note on the issue log or issue wall, um, the type of issues that everyone may have. So each team member, sorry, each team leaders would then inform their team members what to do, uh, which is pretty much simple. If you feel something's wrong or something's not right, write it on a, on a sticky note and then post it up in the issue wall, which we have somewhere out there, okay? And then step number three is to review weekly. So we, what we've decided to do as a team is every week, and usually happens on a Thursday, is 
um, we go through the issue log together or the, the issue log in the form of a wall together and kind of address it and figure out what's wrong with it together as a team. So it's, a, it's really simple. There is nothing technical about it. I mean, you could go to the extra mile of creating an app to solve this type of issues, but really we've started with the easiest way of doing it and see how it goes. And then we, re we would review it again in two weeks time and, and see what type of iteration we could do or it's not worth doing or it's actually really, really helpful. Um, what type of an impact it has for the business, okay? So really, that's the end of it. What you wanna get out of it is just these action steps. And you may ask, similar to how you have asked before, what happens to everything else, Alvin? Well, everything else is there if you wanna refer back to it. But essentially, from my own experience, usually if you just get these things done, then everything else doesn't really matter, or it may require another type of discussion later on, okay? All right, I hope that's helpful. Um, as I said, I'm gonna share some links from AJ and Smart because they've got a whole bunch of documentation around this, which is really, really helpful. And um, other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.